بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ سو دس ویڈیو از اباؤٹ اسٹیٹ اسپیس ریپرزنٹیشن آف این الیکٹریکل نیٹ ورک دا کوشچن دیٹ وی ہیو چوزن از فرام دا نارملائز بک آف کنٹرول سسٹمس اینڈ اٹس اے اسکل اسسمنٹ ایکسرسائز دا پرابلم از 3.1 اسکل اسسمنٹ ایکسرسائز 3.1 سو ویل جسٹ اسٹارٹ ود دا پرابلم یو کین سی دیٹ وی ہیو ٹو فائنڈ دا اسٹیٹ اسپیس ریپرزنٹیشن آف دا الیکٹریکل نیٹ ورک دیٹ ہیز بین شون ان دس فگر and he is considering v o of t v out of t which is basically the voltage that's appearing at the capacitor c2 as the output so the very first thing when you see a circuit when you see a diagram when you see anything that has to be represented in state space form the very first thing that you have to identify is the state space variables so state space variables matrix is the very first thing that we need to build so identifying the components over here which can be represented in form of derivatives and equations are three c1 this capacitor this inductor l and c2 this capacitor so we have two capacitors and one inductor so we have three energy storage elements over here two of them are capacitors and one of them is inductor now we clearly know that capacitors resist change across their voltages and inductors resist in change in current across their uh, endpoints so we will have vc1 il and vc2 as the major components of our uh, state space matrix so that's in front of you the x matrix the state space variables matrix is vc1 il vc2 and we know that x dot would be vc1 dot il dot and vc2 dot so now we move further to writing the equation uh, the very first thing that we'll be doing after uh, identifying the x matrix is that we have to identify the appropriate variables on the circuit so you can see that uh, i have mentioned the ic1 the inductor current the capacitor 2 current and the resistor current over here and now we need to write equations for the state space variables that we had already uh, mentioned in the very first slide so the derivative relations for the capacitor is we know dvc divided by dt that is the change in voltage across a uh, capacitor is basically equal to ic1 that is the current across it divided by the capacitance similarly uh, if we have an inductor the change in its current is basically represented as the voltage divided by its inductance and because we have two capacitors one of them is named as c1 and the other one is named as c2 so we have written the equations for all of the components all of the state variables that we have now we need to find out these terms ic1 vl and ic2 uh, with respect to this diagram that has been given to us so if you can see closely in this diagram i have already depicted ic1 il ir and ic2 and with the help of kirchhoff's current law and voltage law we'll write the equations that are necessary for uh, filling into these derivative relations that we have already established so the ic1 current is basically if you um, see closely in this figure is sum of ir plus il the capacitor 1 current is basically the sum of current that's flowing through this resistor and this inductor now we can see that the resistor current this ir is basically nothing but the current value which is flowing due to the difference of voltages that are being developed across this inductor and this capacitor so the voltage across this inductor is vl and across this capacitor is vc so vl minus vc divided by this impedance that is the r is basically equal to the current that's flowing through this resistor ir uh, resistor r so we put in the values of uh, il as it is and ir as 1 over r into vl minus vc2 considering that the voltage uh, in this inductor 
is greater than the voltage across this capacitor because the current is flowing towards the rightward direction as we have chosen initially. If we choose different directions, the signs would change and uh, at the end all of that would equally uh, be right. You can change the directions, there would be different signs but the result would be same. So the next thing is VL because I told you that we have to find out equations for the terms that had been mentioned in the de derivative relations. So we know that the change in current uh, is in derivative form for the inductor. So we need to find out the voltage relation and we can see that VL the voltage that is being developed at this inductor is nothing but the sum of this voltage minus the capacitor drop. So this voltage minus the voltage which is being dropped at this capacitor would be equal to the voltage at this inductor because they are in parallel. So VL is equal to minus VC1 plus VI. Next thing is the capacitor current IC2 and if you see that because this capacitor is in series with this resistance R so IC2 is basically equal to IR and we already know from the very first equation that IR is nothing but 1 over R into VL minus VC2. So this is the third equation. Then the only thing that's left now is that we have to put these three equations, these three relations where here in these in these three equations relations that we have mentioned. We have find out IC1, we have find out found out VL, we have found out IC2. So we just put in the values over here in this relations that we are that we have been given already. So the very first relation that we are looking at is IC1 relation and this equation that we found out in the previous section. So you can see that if we put in the value of IC1 in this equation, C1 would be divided by all the terms that are on the right side and DVC1 divided by DT would be on the left side. This is nothing but VC1 dot and that would be the derivative component of the VC part that's already in our X matrix, the state space matrix. The next relations that we are going to use are the voltage of inductor ones. So we put in the value of VL into this equation and the result is in front of you. We have put in the value of VL over here from here minus VC1 plus VI and both of them are divided by inductor impedance L, inductance L and here would be IL dot or you can say the derivative of uh, current that's being uh, flowed through the inductor. The next relationship set of relationship is for the IC2 and uh, we'll follow the same trend that we have been following in the previous two relations. So we'll just put in the values over here and we have the equation for VC2 dot. Now you can see that the three state space variables that we had developed in the very first look at the question. Now we'll just put in the values in the matrices to find out the matrix A, matrix B, matrix C and matrix D. You can uh, uh, in the equation you can uh, in the question we have uh, we know that it was given that the output is V out v, which is the uh, voltage that was being developed at the capacitor C2. So V out is basically nothing but VC2. Now we put in the values into the X dot is equal to AX plus BU. So this is the A matrix uh, and how have we filled it? We have filled this matrix using these equations, these three equations. For VC1 dot you can see I'll just show you one of the uh, values. VC1 dot is equal to minus 1 over RC1 into VC1 and if we have a look at the X matrix you can see the X matrix has the very first component as VC1. So VC1 VC1 has the coefficient minus 1 over RC1 in the VC1 dot equation which is the very first equation and you can see that the VC1 dot equation that would be the very first equation has minus 1 over RC1 as the coefficient of VC1 which is which would be the part of X matrix and this would be filled from the values of VI that were being added as uh, the constants so you can see that VI has 1 over RC1 coefficient in the DVC1 by DT equation 
and you can see I'm sorry and you can see that uh, yes my 1 over RC1 is the value that is being multiplied with the u which is the input vi so in the same trend you will follow uh, you will fill all these uh, matrices matrix a matrix b and the matrix c would be filled using this information which is the output equation so in this way you will uh, find out the state space representation of any electrical network you first of all need to find out the state space variables and then you need to find out the exact equations that you need and the last thing is filling out the matrix x dot is equal to ax plus bu and y is equal to cx plus d. Uh, further if you have any question you can ask me in the comments. Uh, inshallah I will be there to help you out. Take care. Allah Hafiz.